sure you've seen the buzz about Generative Fill AI in the new beta version of Photoshop. Now it is really fun to try and I highly recommend you download a copy and try this. Now some people may think this is a bad thing because it's taken away from the post-processing. But honestly, once you try it, you will see the possibilities that are there. Is it going to generate a photograph that would never existed? Yes, it can. And it will do that. But that's down to you as an individual. How you use it creatively is down to you. Are you going to claim that that photograph that you have just posted up on the internet is a photograph or is it generative AI? Entirely up to you how you go about that. Personally, I've had fun for, with this for the past three or four days that I have been trying it out. And to save waxing lyrical about how good I think it is, I'm going to show you some of the things that I've been doing with it so far. So let's dive right in. More than likely, the first thing you'll try with Generative AI is to extend your canvas to see what the resulting image is like. Remember, it's in its early days, but even at that, it is really intuitive and does it really, really well with all the images. And even with the fine details of this grass in this image here, you possibly couldn't tell that that was not the entire photograph. Another thing it does incredibly well is reflections. And now I've taken a simple example here for the reflections, but you can take more complex examples and it works just as well. Generative AI can be used to speed up your workflow as well. And one of the things I thought I would try here was remove the necklace here. And it did a really good job of it. You can see that I've left that in there and a tiny bit there, but that would be for me to clean up. The next thing I thought I would do is add some clothing. So I drew around this area here and clicked generate and add clothing. So now the first option it gave me was this which worked quite well. The second option, black top, works well. Third option, it finished off the top of this. I'm going to leave it at the white top just for this example. And as you can see, there's a couple of anomalies in here, but there's a mask created with this. So I could simply go into the brush, increase my brush size, take the opacity down, and paint some of this back out. Next thing, the model has long straight hair. So I wanted to see if it would create windblown hair, and it did. These are my two hiking companions. This is Maya, who doesn't like getting her photograph taken, and this is Inca, who does like getting her photograph taken. But trying to get the two of them to look the same way in the same image was and sit together to get a photograph taken turned out to be quite impossible. So what I did, this is taken in the same day, although you can see they're edited slightly differently, they're taken at the same point as well. What I did was I extended the canvas out just to about there. And then I created a generative fill layer. And I did that by taking the rectangular marquee tool, including some of the original image, going into Generative Fill and clicking Generate. I then brought the image of Inca in and created a loose mask round about her. And then from here, Shift, Command, Alt and E to combine all the layers together. So we now have this, but if you look at the balance of this and I click on there, it's not bad, it's not bad, but perhaps I want to extend the canvas slightly. Using this layer here, then go in, loosely draw around this, including some of the background, go into Generate, and click Generate. This provides you with three options. And you can go, you can create more. I can get different variations. So I could just click here and it'll give me another three variations. But for me, that first one worked well. Same with this side. Go back into the layer that I want to generate from. Draw loosely around here. And do the same again. Go 
Compositing is another area I wanted to try it with, just to see how it would affect the images and what I would end up with my, for my final effect. For this one, you can see I generated both sides of this after extending the canvas and it's done quite a decent job of this if not a better job than I expected of this and now one of the things here you can see that it has got three different choices here I could have generated more but one of the things I'd like to point out is the flames here and the light on the arm it actually read that that light was there how it did that I don't know The next series of images I can't take credit for at all. The idea actually came from Robert Baggs, one of the editors and writers at F-Stoppers. And I'll put a link to his website below and also his articles as well. But I just thought it was a great idea and I got lost editing like this for over an hour. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the image smaller on the screen and move that across. Next thing is I'm going to extend the canvas, bring it right out to about there and then drop in a second image. Now you'll notice this second image has a different sky and that to be honest is fine by me. They were actually taken within minutes of each other because the light changed so much. So I've dropped these two images into onto one canvas. I'm going to rasterize this layer. And then I am going to take the lasso tool, draw around here, draw around there, generative fill and generate. And there we go. Look what that has done to that image. Now we've got different options here. And the final one that you'll see is again different because it generates different each time. If I click generate again, I'll get another three options, like so. And I actually prefer that version. So let's see what the next one's like. Like that, too much here, and then that one there, and that one's okay. So that's a fun thing to try, and I've got two or three images that I've done this with that you'll see next. Incidentally, the image you've just seen, I took a few steps further, added an old barn, an old rusty car, changed some of the foreground elements to end up with the image that you see on your screen now. Hopefully you enjoyed what you saw there and hopefully it just lets you see someone else playing around with it and what they've come up with. I really do think it's going to speed up the workflow for a lot of people. If you want to create an image that never existed using it, go ahead and do that. that that's for you to do. Does it make you a compositor? Does it make you a good editor? No, to be honest, because in my opinion, that's the computer doing it. You're just typing in commands of what you want to see. Can it be used for a lot of things? Oh, yes. And will it be used for a lot of things? Yes. And will it get better? I am sure it will. I'd also like to mention that the images that I used were quite small. They were only 2,000, 3,000 pixels long edge. They weren't any bigger than that. And that's simply because I understand that it's in the beta stage. And at the moment, it doesn't handle large files too well. And you have to make up certain sections. So just for the purposes of this video, I, o I only used smaller images in this. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next video.